Hi. So today the name of my talk is Taking Care of Our Mental and Emotional Health. So I'm going to explain a little bit about what I'm going to be talking about. So I have been involved in with complementary therapies since 1999 and especially with this age where we're in an age of transformation and changing times with COVID-19. That's why I wanted to talk about our mental and emotional health because it's really important. Even though we're coming out of lockdown, we may soon be facing another lockdown. So it's very important to be able to find tools that we can use um, to help ourselves in this changing time. So there are different um, tools that I have that I would use. As I said, I've been doing, I started off doing Reiki in 1999 and I'm a Reiki master teacher. I don't use, like to use the word master. I just call myself a Reiki teacher. So that's my passion. My passion is Reiki. And I would have been doing a lot of distance Reiki um, since the start of um, COVID-19. So the last three months I've been doing a lot of distance Reiki. And I also have been sending IET on sound healing. So what I wanted to talk about was the different tools that I have that you can use to help yourself or you can contact me for any more information. I, and I'm also available to give distance sessions as well. So when we talk about Reiki, what Reiki does is it's a Japanese technique for relaxation and stress reduction. Everybody probably knows what Reiki is, but that's how I describe it. And when you do Reiki, what it does for a person is it's, it reduces the stress, it calms a busy mind, it can be good for anxiety, all kinds of things. So today I'm just going to talk about the different therapies that I do and who I am and then how you can relate that back to helping you. So I will be talking about flower essences in my upcoming talk and I'll also be talking about crystals, but I'll be talking about crystals and chakras because I was teaching a Reiki class yesterday and the chakra system is something that really resonates with me. And at the end of my talk, I'm only going to probably do a 15 minute talk. I'm not going to go for 30 minutes. I just like little short talks. So basically what happened with me was I came across Reiki in 1999 because I had my own health issues. And then I met my Reiki teacher and he taught me Reiki and it just went from there. And I just knew when I had the Reiki entunement, it was something different. So then I did it on myself for many years because I had my own health issues. And then I opened my own business in 2006 because uh, I wanted to give back. Reiki had helped me so much that I wanted to give back to other people. So in this age, or in this age of, you know, this change and transformation, as I'd mentioned, the, the therapies that I offer can really help you because if you're feeling anxious because you're out of your normal routine or your head's feeling busy or you're stressed going to work because you're maybe one of a, you know, a key worker, working with the public and you're going into an environment where you're out of your comfort zone, then that's when you can have the different therapies. Because I have a few clients that are nurses and they're on the different fluorescences, which I'll talk to you about in my upcoming talk. They would be on the fluorescences as a rescue remedy. And it really helps if you're feeling anxious or your mind is very busy just very or very stressful this helps to calm the nervous system to calm your mind right down so i would have nurses who would be taking the rescue remedy but then also they would be having regular therapies mostly reiki but they would be having the regular therapies just to avail of their own that's I mean, that's your mental and that's your emotional health whatever tools you use to help yourself so that's really what this talk is about it's how do you and what do you use to help yourself you know, because I do use Reiki on myself. Yeah, I have used Reiki to help my own health immensely. And that's why I started my own business because I wanted to give back to people. I wanted to be helping people and that's why I use crystals and that's why I use essential oils and why I do different therapies that I do. I do do massage, but I'd much rather work in the field of holistic or complementary therapies because yes, massage is great when, you know, you've got tension aches and pains, massage is very good for that. But the way I see it is when you do the complementary or the holistic therapies, you're really working on the whole person, you're working on body, mind, spirit. So you're working on the mental, you're working on the emotional, you're working on all facets of the person. So that's why I'm, this talk is called Taking Care of Our Mental and Emotional Health, because during COVID-19, we really may need to reach outside of our comfort zone and say, 
if something's not sitting right with me and you need a little bit of help. So if you go in my page, you'll find information on the different therapies that I offer and you can send me a message and you can then you know, book yourself in for a session or you can ask me questions about the different products I have. Because when I do therapies, I find a lot of times I'm using crystals and I'll, I'm going to talk about crystals in one of my upcoming talks too, because crystals really they do work and people might say well how can a crystal help me it really does because each crystal has its own individual property but i'm not going to get into those and i'm not going to get into the flower essences now because i'm going to talk about those again but the flower essences are tools like you've probably all heard of back rescue remedy they're tools that we can use to help ourselves on a deep level if we're just feeling stressed if we're just feeling anxious if we're feeling overwhelmed if you know a lot of people would have fear with COVID because I know we are coming out of a lockdown but then as I said there's another lockdown coming so we're just coming out of one difficult situation into another so then what do we use to help ourselves our family members our friends our loved ones you know people aren't able to travel as much anymore we're going out you see people with masks people with gloves on it's you know we're going into an environment where it's very sterile we're trying to keep two meters apart from each each other and you know for me going back I will be going back to work on the 20th of July. I'll be working in a very sterile environment, you know, to protect myself and ultimately my clients. And, you know, that's something that in this age, we really have to think of what can we do? What can we do to help ourselves? What tools can we use? So that's why I wanted to talk about our mental and emotional health today, because the mind is very important because if our mind is disturbed, or we're feeling very anxious, then it's hard to carry out our normal everyday tasks, or it's hard to take care of those that we need to take care of. And it's hard to do our jobs if we're going into a place where we're feeling fearful and anxious, and the mind is racing, then how can we go in and, and perform what we need to do in a calm way? So when you add these different therapies to your life, they really do make a distant difference. Because I had one client and he'd had Reiki for me in person and he's kind of oh, what's this distance stuff no and then he tried a session because i said look just try a session and he tried a session and then he said the first day come on okay i'm feeling that and then the second day he said okay i feel a little bit more by the third day the difference is made in this gentleman's life and he just felt much calmer he said the third the third uh, he did um session three days in a row and by the time he had the third session he just said the difference it made in his life and um he's on one of the essences as well there's different essences there's about three or four different categories four different categories of essences and he would be on one of the essences um, and he really finds the differences this makes in his life the first one he took hmm, second one yes i really feel that and then the third one the third essence he just has made so many changes to his life because of the essences so what i like to do is i like to help people if i can because that's why i'm doing what i do because this work helped me so much with my own health issues. I had a lot of health issues and that's why I trained in Reiki. And then I've had three kids since then and um, different health issues along the way. But I always find it's the healing work or the holistic therapies or complementary therapies that really help me in my own everyday life. So that's why I reach out to people and I do what I do because I want to help people. And I've been, you know, I've been there, I've been anxious, I've had a busy mind, I've had these different things in my life, so that's why I want to reach out and help people, because then you can say, oh, I can take this essence, oh, that really calmed my mind, oh, I'm less anxious. And, you know, I would do distance therapies for people who would be suffering with a lot of pain. I work on cancer patients, I'm going to be going back to work on cancer patients in August, so, you know, I've trained doing um, different training, so I can actually do reflexology and things for people with cancer. So those are the areas that I would work in. And when you do reflexology for somebody who has swollen feet or whose limbs are sore, and then they get up and they're like, oh, my feet are less swollen, or I had a good night's sleep because my joints were really swollen, then you're making a difference in somebody else's life. Not only are you calming the mind, not only are you helping them with pain, you're making a difference in somebody's life. And some people, you know, they continue. They always have sessions with me. They don't stop. Other people do for a while and then they come back. And this this age, this you know, with the coronavirus, it's all about what we can do to help ourselves right now and our loved ones. 
and our family and our friends, you know, and even the people we're working with, it's all about supporting each other right now so we can be as good as we can be and we're not anxious and we're not afraid and we're not overwhelmed and we're not stressed. We're working to minimize these things in our lives by using different tools that can help us. So that's why I'm talking about the mental and emotional health today because that's essentially what you know these these things will do you know the, the crystals the essences the different therapies if you know I, I do many different holistic or complementary therapies if you ask me send me a message to my business page i can ask any questions that um you may have and then i'm also available um to do distance sessions as well and then for anybody who would want to come and see me in person i will be opening my center on the 20th of july and um, offering the Swedish massage, Swedish full body massage, reflexology, and about five or six different complementary therapies. So that's what I do, and that's who I am. And you know, Reiki is my passion. I started that in 1999, and I've added different tools along the way. I do IET, which is basically if anything negative, you turn it into the positive. That's what IET does. It takes away a lot of the negative. And you're working on the negative emotions you're you know you're taking away distrust you're imp implementing trust you know you're working on fear and you're taking away fear so the iet basically works on the deeply negative emotions turning them into positive and it's a beautiful healing modality and reiki is for the relaxation and the stress reduction and calming the mind and rahani is basically it's reiki for the heart you know so anybody for anybody who has anxiety or grief that's what rahani does and then I also do sound healing and sound healing is like Reiki but it goes a little deeper and it uses sound and then, I, and then I'm going to show you at the end a little bit of tapping and then if you want the chart or you have any questions on that you can ask me so with the EFT the tapping what it does is you're working on different meridian points and as you start to tap you maybe about a second or third session then you really start to calm yourself and you really start to realize oh the mind's not so busy when I first started doing the tapping um, the stomach point would be under the eyes and I couldn't tap on that point it was so sensitive for me because I have leaky gut I have quite a lot of digestive issues and the healing work has helped me immensely actually with that so when I first started tapping it was so tender for me and now I can tap away on those points and I see a huge shift there so when I talk about these different modalities I use them myself it's not that I'm saying to people to you know oh, I'll, I'll send you a session or, or I'll train you up in Reiki. I use them myself for my own health and I work on my kids as well. My kids get reflexology, my kids get massage. You know, all my kids do Reiki. My 11-year-old son, he is an amazing Reiki practitioner. He's really, really good. He would work on me. So I, you know, I use these tools for myself. I've worked on my sister, I've worked on my mom. So I use these tools for myself and my family as well. You know, I work on my animals as well. I teach animal Reiki. I teach about three or four different kinds of Reiki. I just, you know, I'm always up updating and adding to the tools that I have because I just think this is what we're going to need as we go forward into a time where we don't know what is ahead of us. This is what we need. We actually need the tools to help ourselves. So, you know, if we're feeling fearful, okay, well, let's just go take the rescue remedy or anxious. Let's go take the rescue remedy. Oh, let's have some Reiki. And then we start to notice, oh, the mind's calmer. Oh, I'm not as anxious. And then we then we are able to go through our life with a much wholer body, mind and spirit because we're not disturbed by the external features. So that's what these modalities do. They really help us to shift through our own issues, our own conditions, our own aches, our own pains, our own mind, our own fears, our own anxiety. And if you want any more inf information, just go to my Shambhala Holistic Center page, send me a message, ask me any questions you have. I can explain the therapies in more detail. I am available uh, to do sessions for people. So if you want a session, you can just contact me and book yourself in. And all, all the therapies are the same price. It's a 30 minute session. And then you get a synopsis of what I find when I'm working on you. So you can tell me what's going on with you or you can not tell me what's going on with you. And the modality will always find out so I wanted to, I will talk more about the flower essences, but I'm not going to talk about them today. And, um, you know, I can help you pick a flower essence. There's 30 plus now, I'm going to say 39, but I'm not sure if that's right, because um, 
my friend and mentor who trained me and then every time I think right okay I've got the full set then another one comes out so there are different um, sets of fluorescences there's the dark sky there's a solar system there's rescue remedy which is in its own category and then there'll be tree essences as well which are for children the tree essences are for children because their energy system works completely different than ours and it isn't fully developed when they're children so that's why the children get tree essences not the other essences so I will talk about those more when I do my talk on the flower essences and I can talk about which ones are appropriate for now. So now I'm just going to do a little sequence of the tapping and if you want the charts you can just PM me and let me know and if you have anybody you think oh this would be really beneficial for them then you know you can say hey I'm thinking about this for such and such and you can ask me prices as well if you go to the um, the page for the event you'll see my prices on there you'll see a list of the therapies in detail you'll see the different items that I have available in the shop I've got crystals chakra bracelets I've got flower essences so if you go to the event page you'll see all the information on there so I'm just going to stop talking now and I'm going to just do some tapping and as I said I can go into each um, modality in much more detail if you have any questions and um, if you wanted to come and see me in person, you can come see me in person. I'll, I'll be available for sessions from Monday the 20th of July. So I'm just going to show you how to tap. So when we do the tapping, what we do is we start and we just put our hands right over our heart. This is called the heart hug. So this is what I. This is the EFT that I was trained in. This is more the energetic kind of EFT. And this is something we can do in our own homes. And it's something that if we're feeling anxious, we can actually tap on ourselves and then we can also release a lot of negativity by tapping on ourselves as well. So this is the heart hug. So we just, and I usually close my eyes. And I just do a few breaths just to really bring the energy down. So we're not so in our head. So I'll just maybe three breaths. And then we're going to go up to basically here where the crown is and you can do with one finger or two and I usually go with my right hand because that's my dominant hand and I just kind of tap here and when I start tapping here I can feel I can feel that little soft spot on my head and I can feel the energy coming in so I tap there then I'm going to go to what we call our third eye just there and you can do one or two fingers then we're going right to kind of the top of the nose lightly tapping tapping just kind of there, the cor there, just right there. And then we're going to tap the corner of the eye. And then under the eyes, and this was the point that I always find very sensitive. This is a really good point for if you've got digestive issues. And you're just going to tap really lightly under your eyes, because that can be a very sensitive area. Then you're going to do under your nose, chin. And then you're just going to tap kind of along the collarbone here, just right across. And then when you're tapping, you should start to feel the energy coming in. And then you're going to take your thumb and you're just going to tap along the outside of the nail bed. You're just tapping there. Next finger. Just tapping lightly. Tapping lightly. Tapping lightly. Tapping lightly. And then you can just, you can just tap one hand. Sometimes I tap one, sometimes I tap two. Again on the outside of the nail bed. And then I always finish with a heart hug and then a few breaths. And then you can do, you can do a few different rounds, you know, if you want to do two or three rounds of tapping, you can. And then when you're doing the tapping, you can also be thinking of things that you want to, mo to shift through, any negative emotions, or you can go into the tapping saying, I'm feeling very anxious today, I'm feeling very angry today, I'm feeling very sad today. And as you tap, you want to start releasing those negative emotions that you're holding so them as you start to tap by the time you get to the second or third round you should really start to feel your mind calming down you should start to feel like the different emotions are leaving sometimes as you're feeling maybe a lot of anger or maybe a lot of anxiety it might take a few rounds before the energy starts to calm down and that and um, sometimes you know people you know, and ask you when you do the tapping there's a thing called a sue scale so we're starting with a negative and then we're working up the scale till we get into the positive on the higher up the positive side of the scale you can get the better it can be because sometimes you're not going to get way up to the the top of the plus side you might just be 
in the middle or the fact that you've got yourself from the negative onto the positive is a good thing so sometimes you're only going to just be in the positive side of the two scale and that's okay and then as the more you tap and the more rounds you do then you can shift more and more up the um scale the sue scale so you can be much more in the positive side and i find for me when i first was introduced to tapping a long time ago many years ago i didn't feel so much and then as i was reintroduced to it by my teacher who taught me eft then i really did notice a difference so i'm just going to um end this talk for now and i will be doing another talk on the fluorescences and then i'm going to talk about the chakra system and the crystals as well because when i was teaching reiki yesterday i just thought I really love the chakra systems and it's really important too, especially when you're talking about crystals, because they relate, the chakras relate to different areas of the body and then you're putting the crystals on different areas of the body too. So I'm not going to go into those um, topics right now because those are coming and upcoming talks. So if you want any more information, you want me to help you pick an essence, you want me to send you information on the different essences, I can let you know. The essences are normally on my Facebook page, but just because of COVID, I've been kind of updating my page and taking off posts and, you know, I will be putting the essences on my page, but I can send you any information on the essences. You know, if you say, look, I need an essence for this, I can help you. So I can definitely send you whatever essences I feel you're drawn to. And then, you know, I can get, send you a list of two or three and then you can pick the main one that you're drawn to and every essence will come with a picture. So or I can, you know, I can help you choose crystals as well. I can explain the different therapies to you. So if you want any more information, just um, send me a private message. If you want to book in for a session, send me a private message. And as I said, I will be on talking about the fluorescences and crystals in the upcoming week and a half or so. So um, hope you enjoyed the talk. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know.